This is a residential hospital. It's supposed to care for adults with learning disabilities. People unable to care for themselves. But Panorama's been undercover and found systematic abuse. Patient suffering. Staff out of control. Away from their families, these were patients without a voice. The level of abuse that I saw in that room was the worst I've, I've ever seen in my entire life. Thirteen staff have been suspended from the hospital and patients moved to safety. Tonight, we expose a huge failure at the heart of our system of care. What should happen to this hospital? It should be closed down. An industrial estate on the fringes of Bristol and a building which is home for up to 24 patients. It's called Winterbourne View, a purpose-built private hospital for people with learning disabilities and autism. When it's full, the taxpayer pays more than four million pounds a year to house patients here. But not all is well. Last year, a senior nurse at the hospital complained to his bosses of abuse. He also went to the top, the healthcare watchdog, but nothing changed. So he risked his career to talk to us. I've seen a lot over 35 years, and this, I've never seen anything like this, never. Um, it's the worst I've seen. These are all people's sons, daughters, parents, aunties, uncles. These are all people who've got families. And the families themselves don't know what goes on in there. They don't go inside the unit, they just go to the visitors area and the patients come out to see them. Nobody, even the families, gets to see what's inside there. They would be horrified if they knew. It's a hospital which should evaluate and treat its patients and work out how best to get them back into the community. What it's supposed to do is to assess people's psychological and psychiatric state and perhaps to work out the best way of responding to somebody, both responding to them when they're presenting problem behaviour, but also uh, the best way of supporting them. Several staff had reported problems at Winterbourne View, assaults even, but nothing changed. We needed to get inside. So undercover journalist Joe Casey applied for a job as a support worker, a carer. I just got offered a job uh, and I've accepted, which is really, really good. And I just need to give my call back to get a few more details. It was going to be a sensitive operation. We arranged extra training so he'd know how to safely restrain disturbed and difficult patients. At the same time, he'd be using three secret cameras and keeping a daily video diary. I was apprehensive about working at Winterbourne View and caring for people with learning disabilities. I've never worked in care before and I had no idea what I would find when I'd walk in. After just a week of training with the hospital, Joe finds himself working with some of the most disturbed and challenging patients. Good morning. He'll be working the top floor the locked ward. How are you? It's where our whistleblower said the worst abuse is happening. There are long corridors with individual bedrooms for the 10 patients. They spend much of their day in the lounge. The staff sit among them. There didn't seem to be much in the way of activities for the patients. A lot of the time, the patients would be hanging around, sort of in the lounge, watching TV. And when there were activities, a lot of them didn't seem interested in it at all. And they just looked bored. Only those carers we filmed mistreating patients will be identified. The only patients we'll identify are those whose families have viewed the footage and agreed it can be shown. on the first day and it's not long before Joe notices something odd. 
a support worker called Ali was sitting with a patient on the couch and was just poking the patient's eyes. Right in front of me, just poking it, casually poking her eyes. Al is a support worker with six years' experience. As they wait for lunch, the same patient is on her knees being wrestled by another member of staff. Her shirt has ridden up her back, exposing bare flesh, and support worker Ali has seen it. All of these patients have learning disabilities and many have only a childlike awareness of what's going on around them. After lunch, and Joe's in the lounge. All seems peaceful, but this time a carer called Graham starts to focus on a patient we'll see more of later. Later, Joe's called to one of the most vulnerable residents. She's a woman in her 40s who lives in a fairy tale world of dolls and princesses. A group of support workers are making their way to her room. The patient throws something at one of them. You would like it if I chuck bad things at you, would you? No, so stop it! They punish her by confiscating her pillowcase. Three support workers take her to the floor. Listen, you don't get, listen, you don't get to chuck stuff at me and get away with it. You should know that, all right? You know that I'm going to let you get away with it. Uh, do you need me or One of them is lying across the patient's chest with an arm across her throat. I'm going to keep it, all right, until you can say sorry. They should be calming her down, but this is punishment. Because we've done nothing to you, Last year, the same patient suffered a broken arm whilst being restrained. Go on, spit at my staff and I dare you. Go on, I dare you. Because you know what will happen. One of the staff involved is Charlotte. She gave Joe this piece of advice. The minute she gets anywhere close to you, you just have to do what you've got to do, Joe, if you're, if you're on your own. Yeah. Like, if you have to smash her and you smash her, but, you know, you don't let that... The minute she starts shouting, I don't let her on her feet. I put her straight down. All right, so get her straight on the floor. The minute she starts shouting, you won't calm her down. It'll get worse and somebody will get her either a patient or yourselves. And then that's a big thick statement that you have to write why somebody's got her. Why was it, and the first thing management will ask you, why wasn't she on the floor? Hmm. So, yeah, I just whack them all down. It's the end of Joe's first day on the top floor. My first day, it was a real eye-opener. Not what I expected at all. It was, the place was chaotic. It was pretty much as if it was being run by a group of bullies for their own entertainment. We showed our footage to clinical psychologist Andrew McDonnell, an expert in the handling of patients with challenging behavior. Oh, for God's sake. Stonehenge. She's got her arm across her carotid artery on her neck. What That's, can that do? <laughs> well, this supplies oxygen to your brain. I mean, these, these are these are not taught techniques as such. These, these, these are things that they are, in my opinion, making up as they're going along. Our whistleblower, Terry, went to the hospital's management last year and named the patients he believed were at risk of being abused. One of them was Simon. He's 36, but has a mental age of four. The cause remains a mystery. Simon was the most high-profile patient. Um, the reason he was high-profile was because he had a spirit about him and he was not downtrodden in any way. Hello, darling. Darling. 
sit down with me. Oh, no. <laughs> Give me a hug then. <laughs> and he loves to give people bear hugs. And they're hard to get out of the bear hugs, they really are. The people there just didn't like it. They didn't respect what he was trying to do. It was his way of saying hello. People there would say, no, get off, push him away, and they often end up being restrained. During his five weeks at Winterbourne View, Joe would get to know Simon well. Simon, what's your name? Joseph. <laughs> Joseph. Simon Tovey is a really, really funny, interesting patient. Always makes me laugh, always makes me smile. Not, I'm not the only one, all support workers uh, always laugh and smile when they're around Simon. I need to go downstairs, mate. So... His enthusiasm and the way his, his character is just infectious. He's basically sort of got the mind of a kid. <laughs> he sometimes oversteps the mark. You need to calm down for me. You know, invades people's personal space, gets a bit too close, uh, won't take no for an answer. But apart from that, he's just brilliant. I absolutely love spending time with him. Sure? Yeah. I'll jump there for you. Okay. Don't worry. I've been good. You have been very good. You did lots of work today, didn't you? Simon used to live here in a small residential care home close to his mother's village in Wiltshire. He does a lot of hugging. He, he was a very placid child. He didn't start to become much more active until he was older. He's always very generous. He'd give you his last sweet. He, he's that generous. But his behaviour grew more challenging and the council intervened. Simon was moved, supposedly on a temporary basis, but ended up in a succession of hospitals. It was incredibly distressing. We, we suddenly had no control over Simon's life or what happened to him. Um, so in the end we acquiesced and we went along with it because we were clearly informed that Simon would be returning to his place, his home. That was three years ago. Now Simon's behind locked doors in Winterbourne View. One afternoon Joe comes across him sitting in the corner of the lounge with a care worker on his lap. It's the eye poker, Ali again. She's had enough. She's just snatched his favourite drink bottle. It might not seem much, but the bottle goes with him everywhere. It's acquired a special meaning. Our expert says if it's out of his grasp, it could trigger panic. If you've ever concentrated on something yourself, a particular thing that you like to hold in your hand, yeah, it helps focus you away from what's happening around you. It helps you tune out. When somebody takes that off you, that's the equivalent of somebody taking your whole security blanket away. He goes to close the window. It looks like he's seen these games before. Simon's become a source of entertainment. What are we going to do when he goes well? There are other control games they like to play on Simon. Here, a carer called Jason is playing a boxing game. We've got say. Simon has to say ding ding to end the round and make it stop. What's this? How do you the fight? Is that nice and close, How do you the fight? It doesn't always work. Say it then. So the area, what do you say? Low blow. Because he is sort of very exuberant and shouts a lot and likes to play a lot, he becomes a target for sort of play fighting. 